Hello and welcome back to Vault Hunters. So in this episode, I have been asked... Oh, well, by the way, I've been working upstairs in my 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 building here. Uh, working on just kind of, you know, opening it up a little bit, uh, working on the walls, change some stuff out. Uh, I'm going to make this like my main living area because I was just doing everything down here in this little hallway here. And I don't know, it's just kind of small and stuff. So I have decided to move my base of operations up here. And so I've got my, you know, my storage controller, ender chest, my uh, docks and all that kind of stuff. It's all right here. I can do all my stuff with. And it's just a little bit more open. I have some, some more freedom to do some more cool stuff with it, including my beds and stuff like that. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about today is auto-completing vault crystals. So back here, you'll see I have all of my vault crystals that I have built up over time here. Um, I use them pretty often, but I also make them pretty often. I gave CWG you know, a bunch of them here recently. And uh, the, the thing with these is there's some really cool tricks that you can do to basically take all the hard work out of completing your vault crystals. So there are a couple secrets. And the first secret I'm going to show you has to do with having multiple vault altars. So when you have multiple vault altars, when you put a crystal into one of them, they all synchronize themselves when it comes to receiving items. So right now I have this vault altar here, which is in front of my er, um, in front of my storage drawers. I have this altar here, which is the one where I actually do most of my work. And then I have a third altar over here. Now you'll see this altar has multiple exporters in it and a network receiver for my refined storage system. So basically what happens is when I put a crystal into here, the items that show up here will automatically be pulled from my refined storage system if they're in these filters here, these exported filters, automatically pulled from the refined storage system into this vault altar here. This vault altar here doesn't have anything underneath it. It's actually just a complete solid block underneath it. There's nothing here. Having that allows me to take anything that's in my refined storage and pump it directly in just by putting it into these filters here. Now there's obviously more stuff uh, that the vault altar needs that's in these filters right here. These are mostly items that are in our farming storage, which is back over that way. And these are all the items we, we are kind of farming here with the, the garden cloches and the, uh, the melon and pumpkin farm, kelp farm, things like that. All these items come into this uh, system here, which we have a drawer controller and a refined storage interface and uh, external storage interface hooked to this drawer controller. So that's why I can see, so for example, we have 12.4 thousand pumpkins, you'll see 12.6 thousand because I have a few in my system, but most of what I see here is all in this refined storage system because I can import and export directly to it. So yeah, you can easily set yourself up an exporter and you can do this with not just refined storage, but applied energistics and some of the other ones as well. Um, you can just export directly into this, and it will only pull in those items because it's not like a chest. It'll pull in those items when it needs them. Now, when it comes to storage drawers, this is one of the most powerful ones that we have. So with storage drawers, you'll see I have a massive array of different storage drawers, including including some of the 4x4 ones here. And uh, I have a grid here in this, but that's not actually part of the storage drawers. Um, all these storage drawers... All these storage drawers and everything you see here are, is all connected to this central framed drawer controller. And you'll actually see items flowing out right there. And I have another vault altar down here. Now, what I've done is I used the mechanism uh, ultimate logistical transporter. And you don't have to use the ultimate one. You can use any of the logistical transporters. And I set it up here. I put it between the vault altar and the controller. Because remember, the controller can access all of these drawers. So say I pull out, you know, a stack of uh, granite here. I just double click it here and it'll go back into here. Um, but what is happening is all the items that are needed by this vault altar, which we can't see on this one. You can only see it on the one that you actually put the crystal in. But since they are all synchronized, you'll see the items are flowing in here. Now I am currently farming up some wheat. I don't have quite enough wheat in my storage system here. Yeah, you'll see I just have like one or two wheat here and it's currently flowing in, but it's being pulled directly out of this storage drawer into the vault altar and you'll see it fill up up here. So yeah, we have 2901, and you'll see it go down here in a second. There it goes, 2897. And so as items uh, are in your storage system, they will just flow into here, assuming you have this, have a vault altar. It could be, you know, anywhere, connected either to some sort of external exporter from your storage system or in front of a drawer controller that has drawers that are full of all this stuff. All right, so this crystal just completed itself. Let's go ahead and hit the button here. 
There we go. Another crystal for the storage here. Now let's go ahead and do another here and we'll see what we get here and we'll watch it kind of auto complete itself. All right. So 8,000 seeds. I don't have 8,000 seeds. Uh, I do have the honeycomb. I do have the pods all. Uh, and you'll see, I do have some seeds. You'll see it kind of work itself down through there. But you'll see these two items completed themselves. Now emeralds, I don't, I don't know if I actually have any emeralds. Uh, I have 305 emeralds. Now, I don't know if these are in a storage drawer downstairs or not. I'm actually going to grab some of these out of here as well to convert them. Um, but the thing is, is if I have some of these items that are not in storage drawers, which obviously I don't have that in a storage drawer, uh, those emeralds are just in my refined storage. So what I can do is I can go over here and put it in as a filter here. So now it will pull emeralds from my refined storage system. So it'll pull it from the disks and you'll see it is heading down now. And so I'll go ahead and put in some more emeralds into the system just directly in there. I'll pull them in and then we'll watch it. There it goes. See, it's heading down again. So as long as the items are in my storage system, it will automatically pull them into the vaulter. Now, there are times that, uh, you know, there are, I have to figure out a farm or something like that for these items. Uh, sweet seeds is one of those that uh, is really annoying to farm. All right, so throw the rest of the emeralds in, and there we go. So now the only thing we actually have to work on for this is the wheat seeds. Now, I've shown a lot of this stuff before, but I am doing my best to build farms for all of the items that are possibly in this whole, uh, you know, system here. And, okay, we have 2,200, so not too bad on the way of seeds. I don't know if I have enough storage inventory here, but we'll pull some in here. So yeah, what I can do also is because everything's hooked to my refined storage system, so like down here, I don't have an exporter for this because I wanted to keep these a little bit separate because of how I have to do this. Um, I want to keep the seeds a little bit separate. I don't want to pull them just directly into my storage system all the time. So what I can do is I can just collect them, open up my wireless refined storage, and dump them in. And if we look, you can see they are going down because they're being sucked into the vault altar. So that's this, this is the the easiest possible way I've ever seen to uh, collect all the items you need for your vault altar. All right, there's another crystal complete. It took quite a while for that machine to get going down there, but we'll take our crystal, we'll put it into the storage here, and we'll grab another one. Okay, so this one has 13,000 netherrack. <laughs> oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, I don't I think I have 13,000 netherrack. Uh, actually, I do. I have 16,000. Okay, so I was much better off than I thought with netherrack. So basically, at this point, we just kind of have to wait for this thing to pull it all in. And it'll pull it in pretty quick. See, it going down there at a decent rate. Uh, diamonds are complete. Cakes? I don't know if I have any cakes. I have two cakes. Uh, no problem there. All right, uh, raw beef. I have 76 raw beef. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that's in the drawer. Okay, there we go. So I need 2,000 raw beef. Ooh, that's going to be painful. And then cakes. So let's go make some cakes real quick. Now, that's what's really cool about some of the earlier mods here. The cooking for blockheads. I can just make sure I have all the items in here I need for cake. I have two milk jars. And here I have wheat and eggs. Oh, I'm going to need some more eggs. Um, eggs are pretty easy to get a hold of. But I can go in here and I can click cake. Click it again. Two, three, four. There we go. There's six cakes. I didn't even need to do a whole lot for it. Use the jetpack to get up here. And yeah, I needed six cakes. So I'm just going to drop these into storage. And then they will get automatically sucked in. There, it's complete. All right, so the netherrack is still working down here. Now the beef, that is one thing that's a little bit tougher. So this is where another episode of Industrial Foregoing comes into play. There is a machine called the Animal Feeder. And what it does is it automatically feeds animals for you so to breed them up. Uh, I have a purple cow in here. I really don't want to kill that one. I want to make sure that one stays alive. But what I can do here, now for some reason, it just, it just kind of stops after a while. And I don't really fully understand it. I don't know if like the cows that want to breed can't get to each other or not. But I just go in here and slash away. Kill some cows here. And you'll see here in a second. Yep, they're starting to breed over there. And I don't know why. They just need like reset every now and then. But yeah, we can just go in here and kill a bunch of cows. And I have the baby cows, but I also have the twerker. So I can actually twerk. And these cows are now going to be full grown, which is really nice. So this is a little bit labor intensive in the sense of things. I don't know if there's another way to completely automate this. I know you can automate, you can have like an animal rancher and it will turn animals into like sludge. But I, I don't think that's what I want. I want this the raw beef. So basically this is just an instance of whack. Coming in here, killing a bunch of cows, making sure I'm using a high looting sword. This is a looting... 
five sword. And so we kill a bunch of them. Then we'll wait for the, them to have more babies. There's the babies. We make the babies grow up. Then the babies that are grown up will make more babies. And we just basically keep going until we have enough raw beef. And so here, I've cleared out a lot of those cows. I can just put the raw beef and everything into the storage system here, and it will automatically pull that into the vaulter for me. So I don't even have to go anywhere. All right, here's another one I think we can complete just fine. You'll see the numbers are just heading down. Uh, it's using the melons. Actually, the melons are coming in over there because those are coming from our farming storage area. Coal is just in my local storage system here, I believe. And same with sand and, of course, the cobweb will come from our local storage system here. I don't know if I have the cobweb in the filter. Ooh, I only have three of them total. So we'll just go ahead and uh, drop those in. Uh, I'm not seeing coal go down, so that makes me think that I don't actually have that in a drawer downstairs. Same with the cobweb. I, those should be in the storage drawers. So we'll see if it pulls that one in automatically. All right, coal's coming in now. That must have been uh, either in a drawer down there or something else. We'll see it complete. And then cobweb, yep, okay, cobweb's complete. I didn't have to do a single thing for this vault altar. I got a crystal with no effort at all. Now, I did have to have the stuff, obviously, so farms are very important, and I love building farms, so this is just a good excuse for me to go in and you know build more farms for a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, brown mushrooms, I always have plenty of those. I have plenty of iron, and I should have plenty of gravel. If I don't have any gravel, hey, yeah, I have 5.7 thousand gravel, so yeah. Oh, that's not quite enough. Okay, so we can actually work on this one a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll go down here, and we'll go to our crusher. We just take some cobblestone. I'll get like basically an inventory full of cobblestone here. And then we'll set this to not eject onto the side there. I don't want it to eject on that side because otherwise the gravel will go over here into the enriching factory and turn into flint, and I don't want that. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to load up this chest above this, just using another logistical transporter, and it'll pull all that cobblestone in here, turn it into gravel, and then the gravel will be output here on the back side. I have some string in there from something else, so we'll just clear that out, put that into storage, put the gravel into storage, and there we go. Now that'll keep going. That's one way to do it. Now, if you want to farm it completely, say you don't have the cobblestone and you want to farm it, you know, fresh, we'll go down here and here is a gravel generator. So what I have here is a basic uh, cobblestone generator, essentially. I just have the, the lava on one side, water on the other. I'm using the iron rods and one of the glass interval signal timers. We'll go ahead and turn it on here. There we go. And you'll see here, it's just basically breaking that gravel right on top of some hoppers. The hoppers are taking it up taking the gravel directly into this crushing factory and it's being crushed directly into gravel and then pulled out and then pulled down into a chest and the chest is then being imported directly into the storage system. Uh, I obviously have a chest on top here for extra if I want to put that in there but yeah so this is just going to sit here and basically infinitely create gravel. Um, obviously this is pretty powerful so I don't want to leave this on all the time but um, yeah this will just sit here and make me basically unlimited gravel from absolutely nothing. Uh, just some sticky pistons, some iron rods, and that's basically it. All right, guys, thanks for joining along. I appreciate you tagging along with this one on how to automate your vaulter. Now, of course, you know, farms are important. So if you have those farms built, this is the easiest way to get all of your items directly into your vaulter. Uh, using multiple vaulters and then multiple methods such as the exporter, the logistical transporter, and storage drawers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode.